Bella Vista Gardening Program. Our topic today is gardening in October, fall bowl planning and planting. Our hostess is Gary Horner of the Bella Vista Garden Club, a Benton County Master Gardener, and her guest is Tony Lacauzi, a Bella Vista Garden Club member also, and a Benton County Master Gardener. And here is our program. Well, welcome to the Bella Vista Gardening Program. I'm Jerry Horner, and joining me today is Tony Lacauzi. Good morning. And um, he's um, our expert on bulb planning, planning and planting. Um, and we're talking about upcoming events, which there aren't too many right now, and um, what to do in your garden in October. But first, I want to tell you about the new set. We have a new set design here at the studio. Uh, the community um, TV station underwent a complete remodel during the uh, shutdown with um, the COVID-19. And behind me, we have um, the um, background photograph. It was submitted by Jan Halgrim, and I, I requested the, um, the Bella Vista Bentonville Photography Club to submit some photos in Bella Vista with fall color, and this is the one we chose. And I think, I think it's a beautiful yeah, choice. Beautiful. Um, I'm thinking it's at the Methodist Church in Bella Vista, one of the Methodist churches mm -hmm. in Bella Vista, but it's a beautiful, beautiful representation of our gorgeous fall colors in Bella Vista. So we'll be changing our background seasonally, so we'll stay tuned for the next one probably in December. So um, anyway, the upcoming events, there's not too many, too much going on in, um, in uh, October, right. for October events, and a lot of things have been shut down, but the North Lights, um, North Forest Lights exhibit is opening up in Crystal, at Crystal Bridges, and that is a wonderful exhibit in the forest. If you didn't see it last oh, year, yeah, they just, make sure you go this right, year. Right, they're it's opening incredible. it up October 26th, and it runs until February 16th. Right. So find a nice kind of warm evening right. and take a stroll out there and see these beautiful lights it's in the forest. It's not just twinkle lights that they strung up in the trees. This no. is taken into another dimension. It really you is. You have to see it. Yeah, have to see it to yeah, believe absolutely. it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> So, but there's not too much coming up. Um, but we wanted to talk about the planning and planting of bulbs. And you have to plan first before you plant. So now's a good time to buy your bulbs. And yep. if you haven't bought them already, some of them could be sold out. Right. And um, Tony has. Or you can um, order online. You can order online. You know, and if, that? yeah, if yep. you go to the bellavistagardenclub.com, website. On the home page, you'll see a connection to the Brett and Becky's, Brett and um, Becky's uh, bulb right. company. It's a wonderful company. It's very supportive of, of nonprofits. And if you order through our website, you will be supporting the Garden Club also because they will give us a portion of your sale. So it's a great fundraiser for us and they're a wonderful company. Right. If you think bulbs are only uh, tulips and daffodils, yeah. when you go through this, you're going to discover a whole new world of bulbs. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's awesome, yeah. and it's worth it. I have things that come up sometime. I forgot that I planted them, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and they come up, and I'm going, oh, wow, I forgot about that. And it's a beautiful. You know, it's yeah. uh, a wonderful way to garden. And their products are wonderful. Their, yep. their plants are wonderful. 119-year-old company. Right. Yeah. Family business. Family so. business, third generation. Mm -hmm. So anyway, when you plan your, your uh, this is a good time to be planning what you're planting. Oh, and by the way, when you order through, uh, from if you go to the Bella Vista Garden Club website and you go to through Bet and, Bet and Brecky that way, we get, they, they reimburse us a couple of pennies for on every order. And that goes to our scholarship programs right. and the other charities that we contribute to with all of our fundraisers throughout the year. So the money, a portion of that money comes back to, to the community. Yeah, I'm, well, all of it comes back right. to the community somehow, yeah. So, um, but you can plant your bulb, plan your bulbs so that they right. can bloom from um, February to May. Right. You can extend that season. It can't be, it may not just be for April, March and April. If you plan properly, you can have color in your garden from bulbs from 
like I said, February yeah. to May. You're better at that than I am. <laughs> <laughs> you have them all coming yeah. at the same time? I'm sort of a loosey-goosey gardener. <laughs> I just stick things here. And then, oh, you but, also... But Jerry's, Jerry's right. If you plan your timing, you can have a, yeah. the entire season with something right. blooming. And then um, you got to try something new. Try new things. I just found these at a box store. And I think we talked about this a couple years ago when we talked about bulbs with um, Barb Templin. And these are uh, fritillary, frit can't pronounce it, fritil fritillaria. These are fritillaria. Anyway, they're um, little bulbs. They're very tiny. And they're um, checkered. And they look like a checkerboard. They're just so cute. This would be so cute at your front door, you know, to greet people. Mm -hmm. And they're just really unusual. So How tall do they get? They're very tiny. Um, let's see. But, okay, we got my glasses on. Yeah. Um, it doesn't say. I don't think they get very tall. Looking I from think that they're picture, probably like they're not over about, three or, about three or four inches, yeah. five they inches. Great in a small pot yeah. as a gift. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they say to plant these three inches deep. And we'll be talking about planting bulbs, but they these are tiny, tiny bulbs. But they say to plant them three inches deep for protection. And, but, you know, look through catalogs and maybe check the stores and, and try something new you haven't tried before. Absolutely. It doesn't hurt, you know. Give a little variety in your garden. So, but you need to plant after the soil has cooled. Yep. It's usually the end of October. And you want to plant in odd groups, like three, five, seven. It's, it's better to do odd groups. Yes, always. And a large mass makes a big statement. You know, yep. if you go to P. Allen Smith, he has just big swipes of, col of, uh, of bulbs, just big, and, you one, know, and one if blending into another. you don't have a another. budget for those big waves, mm -hmm. you can do big two-foot or three-foot diameter circles. Mm -hmm you know, big clumps of color like that, all right. one color, all one color, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. It just uh, makes a statement. It makes it really a statement, yeah. yeah. But if you just have one here and one there and yeah. one there, it doesn't make much of a statement. And if you see them all planted in a line, <laughs> it's like, you know, they, there is no, there's no ingenuity there. No. <laughs> it's, it's just a, a line of daffodils. It's not that attractive. So anyway, th keep that in mind. And um, the most, the, the thing they really need is sun. Now, a lot of these can be planted under uh, deciduous trees, but then you have to keep in mind that the greenery has to stay on that plant for six to eight weeks. Yep. And that is because right. it feeds that bulb. The crocus are good for that. And then the, underneath mm -hmm. your, your, in your treed areas where you're heavily treed, mm -hmm. the, the crocus seemed they bloom so early yeah. that they get enough of that green exposed to the sun before, yeah, before the, the leaves leaf out. come out yeah and uh, they come back mine i've been here 13 years mine have been coming back for 13 right. years and the crocus are the first ones usually to bloom yeah when and you there, see the crocus bloom you know spring is around coming. the corner <laughs> and they can be peep they can be peeking out from the snow oh, oh, yeah. i mean they're just so cute yeah. when they come up and you know it's snowing on them and they're still blooming. Yep. So, but they they also have crocus. If you look in your your uh, descriptions of your plants, they can be extended blooms too because yep. there's some that bloom a, a, little, a little later. A little bit later. Yeah. I can't emphasize enough not to cut off your greenery and don't braid it, and don't um, you know twist it or put it behind another leaf because the sun has to hit those leaves to feed that bulb. That's why you don't have to fertilize. The deer don't eat them. You know, they're just a the perfect plant, really, yep. the bulbs. And then always check your instructions when you get the bulb because um, the rule of thumb is you plant them three times the size of the bulb. Now, if these tiny bulbs are like this big, three times that would be like this. Well, you need to get them down at least three inches to get them protected from the, the winter right. and from people digging up. Right. Now, um, Speaking of digging up, squirrels love to dig them. Yep. And Tony has a good reason. Well, I got a little little secret quick, for a that. Quick tutorial on bulb planting. <laughs> yeah. In Bella Vista. First, <laughs> this this is a bulb digger. You know that you stick in the ground and you twist it and you pull it pulls up a plug of dirt and you put the bulb in and then you knock the dirt back down. If you live in Bella Vista and you have one of these, throw it away. 
Because well, I didn't. That's mine. I didn't I throw it away. I, I put it as well, a decoration she, on my she shed. She hung it on the wall of her shed <laughs> yes. as a decorative piece. Because the minute you go a quarter of an inch in the ground, you're going to hit a rock, <laughs> yeah. and this is totally worthless. Yes, uh, that's <laughs> doesn't number, work in both. That's Vista. number one. Okay, <laughs> number two. If you have fairly fertile soil, what I use is an auger that you can get at any uh, garden supply center or hardware store, and you put it on your drill, cordless drill, and uh, uh, and it gets the job done right away. So I lay my bulbs out first mm -hmm. and then just drill right beside it and all I've got to do is drop my bulb in the hole. But before I drop the bulb in the hole, you know, this is a little something to give your bulb a little boost. Bone meal. Uh, this is 10% uh, potassium. It's 0, 010, 0, so it's all about the flower. And I usually just put a pinch of that in the hole before the bulb goes in. And you know with the bulb, the little pointy end is the one sticking toward the sky. So keep Well, that Tony, I also found out if you plant a bulb upside down, it'll turn around yeah, under the soil. Yeah. It, it's I sort didn't of, really know yeah, that, but it's it's sort of, true. They're, they're pretty hardy, but yeah. you'll get a better plant. They're pr pretty foolproof. Oh, and I might mention on, uh, about the depth, you know, going three times, the, mm -hmm. however tall your bulb is, you want to go three times. The exception that I would make to that rule would be if you're going to do gladiolas, anytime you're going to do gladiolas, uh, it's a really tall plant. Mm -hmm. uh, you, can, you can go considerably deeper and it'll keep, or the really, really tall tulips, mm -hmm. uh, it'll keep the tops from falling over so bad that it makes them a little more stable. Okay. Um, this is another uh, a tool you can use in your garden for digging. And it, it's a good tool if you're just putting out a, a few pieces, but putting out a lot, the auger works better. But in Bella Vista, I have found that this tool is harder on your body because of the way you have to lean and dig, where in Bella Vista, if you have one of these little things, mm -hmm. <laughs> you've got your rock breaker here and the tool does the work. And notice my body is, I'm not putting that strain on my lower back. And the tool's doing the work and two or three whacks like that and then reverse it. And now you got yourself a nice hole to drop your bulb in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and cover it back up. So this is almost a must-have tool anyway, Oh, you have to have one of those if you live in Bella, in Bella Vista. Vista. Mm -hmm. Then after those bulbs are in the ground, uh, most, the daffodils, uh, and the crocus, a lot of the bulbs are pretty safe, but tulip bulbs are a favorite of our little furry friends with a big bushy tail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, one way to keep that little, little guy from making a mess is you can use, this is narrow gauge chicken wire, you can use the, the larger gauge chicken wire, and you wanna lay that on the ground, and you can get landscape pins from irrigation companies or garden centers. And yeah, box stores have them and too. And box stores have them. You can put them down with those. Or, uh, I brought something along I wanted to show you here. There it is right there. Let me drop these back in my bucket. If you don't want to buy landscape pens, if you have some old wire hangers, this is one end of a wire hanger, and then you just get your wire snippers, snip, snip. Snip to, and you got two from each wire hanger, and they work just as well to mm -hmm. hold it down. And then you can camouflage that a little bit with a light layering of mulch on top of that, and uh, and Mr. Uh, squirrel comes along, and he has uh, quite an obstacle to get right, through. Right, he can't get those bulbs. Yeah, and he can't get to your bulbs. So the tulips are almost an annual here because they don't do as well as daffodils yeah, and jonquils. Yeah, they, yeah. The tulips they're beautiful. Are, tulips, uh, you really have to think of tulips. Jerry's right. Yeah. You need to think of tulips as an annual here. Or else put them in a pot. <clears throat> I uh, put them in pots and brought yeah, them in. Yeah, I was going to mention that. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do uh, bulbs, uh, matter of fact, all the bulbs in pots. I, I, I think 12 inch diameter or bigger pots are the way to go. Uh, when you do bulbs in pots, you know, you can put a lot of bulbs in a pot and just space them about an inch apart or the width of your index finger apart is all you got to do. And then, you know, do the math so that when you, once you set them in the, 
on your potting soil that when you add when you fill it up it's that two to three to whatever the the depth the, the depth would be for that bulb and they're great gifts you know they're decorative pieces at your house but they also make great gifts to bring to people mm -hmm. you have a sick friend in the spring you can bring it over and it's just at the time of bloom it's a wonderful gift to right. have what I do the little tip is I put a lot of shredded leaves up on top of that I put that pot on the south side of my house I've, I've never lost one yet in 13 years I just have them on the south side of the house and when uh, if we're going to have a really blue norther way you know zero or below I just throw a piece of uh, row cover, the commercial white row cover, or you can use a white sheet. Do not use plastic, okay? And I just throw that over those pots. And like I say, I've never lost a plant in 13 years of being in Bella Vista. Yeah. So that's the way to go with that. It's the way to plant them. And yeah. you know, when you do them in pots, you can also do layers. You could put a tulip at the bottom because it's a larger bulb and then put the the little tiny ones at the top yep. and they may bloom at a different time and right. you'd have two seasons yep. of that pot get, so get creative get creative with yep. them and yep. you know read the have some fun experiment yep yep and find out when they're going to bloom um, and like I said crocus are the first ones to bloom um, and and they need kind of well all your bulbs need well drained soil. Yes. I mean, you can't put them in solid clay no. <clears throat> or just sand. But um, and sometimes there's one called the uh, Glory of the Snow, and it's uh, a smaller uh, bulb. It's similar to the crocus, but it's a little different. But you know, do your do your investigating. Look at the colors and look at the at the time they bloom and and all yep. the. Some of them, they'll come in lavender and white and pink and yellow. There's so many colors of all these bulbs, too. They've got a, a wide range of colors. Now, your daffodils and jonquils and narcissus, everybody gets confused about that. Right. So it's all in the narcissus family. Right. So daffodils are one thing. It's, there's like uh, 150 different daffodils or more, hundreds of daffodils oh, yeah. and jonquils. The difference between them are the leaves. Um, the jonquils have slender leaves and round tips, and then the daffodils are, are uh, shorter, um, they're sword-like tips, so there's just a difference in them. And the, then the amaryllis. And then you have the amaryllis that are huge. So, um, but the, our, our big favorite, our, our favorite daffodil is the Bella de Vista mm, daffodil. That's right. And Tony has been the backbone of getting thousands and thousands of Bella Vista daffodils tens planted, of tens of thousands, <laughs> planted in Bella Vista. Yeah. We started, what, four years ago? Yeah, four or five years ago. Yeah, yeah. we should have had the picture of the Bella Vista one here, but there, you find them all over because right. we planted them at the at the city um, hall. You'll see them city at the fire stations and the city hall. Library, you know, you, you find them everywhere. And a lot of Bella Vista homes have them too because we've given them out, we've sold them, and they're just everywhere. They're wonderful. And we'll have more in the fall sale this year? Well, um, we had the, the Garden Club had the uh, daylily sale. Yeah. Spectacular. Which was wonderful. But I guess we're going to have some kind of a sale later in the fall. I, I guess sometime in October. Mm -hmm. We haven't announced it, but watch the, watch the uh, uh, website for that. And uh, we probably will have some Bella Vista daffodils because we've got a propagation bed. Yep. So instead of buying them every year, now we can propagate them and, and sell them from the well, propagation Well, the, the, that cultivar, it's mm -hmm. actually called the Bella Vista mm -hmm. Daffodil. Yeah. That's the name of the cultivar. Yeah. Out of hundreds of names, there's mm -hmm. one called the Bella Vista. Yeah. That's what makes it so special. But uh, yeah. it's, uh, uh, it comes from Holland and uh, down through the years, the price has gone up, 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 mm -hmm. up, up. And uh, there, uh, I looked at the prices this year and it's, they're pretty pricey, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, we started our own daffodil farm about three years ago, so we're going to reap our harvest here in the next yeah. week or two and see what we've got. Yeah. Uh, but those will be the ones that we'll have for sale uh, in when whatever fall event we end up having. Yeah. So. And then we um, there's also, um, I have a list of the early bloomers, 
of daffodils and jonquils, the mid-season, and the late bloomers. Well, those, and are those going to be on our website? I will put them all on the website. Great. We'll put it under gardening information, planting and planting daffodils. We'll put a lot of this information on there for you. You can refer back to. But the tete-a-tete -tete is one of the early bloomers. I love this little thing. It's just so sweet. And I have it in about five or six places. And when I see that little tete-a-tete -tete come up, it's like a little, almost not even an inch bloom. It's like a miniature King Alfred, you know, and it's just so cute. And so they bloom first, and um, once they start blooming, then you know that the daffodils are coming. Another one is Barrett Browning, and then there's February Gold. There's Little Gem, uh, Topolino, and um, there's one called Early Sensation. And um, just look them up and see. So if you plant your early ones and then the mid-season, the King Alfred is probably the favorite or the most popular right. over the years. That's an old, old uh, yep. daffodil that's just everybody you know, can recognize. Yep. Then there's April Queen, <coughs> Peeping Tom, Professor Einstein, Ice Follies, and Mount Hood. Now, Ice Follies is white. Yep. It's beautiful. So, and your colors, your variations, because some are white, some are yellow, some are orangey colored, some are pink or mel um, salmon. Right. There's a salmon color. So check your season and your colors, and make sure the colors blend. Yep. Not nice thing about the white ones is they really pop in your garden. They mm -hmm. show up, and uh, uh, if you're an early early riser, or if you like to. Uh, uh, sit out after sunset, mm -hmm. you know, uh, even, you know, if you have it in your front yard, drive by, people that drive by, mm -hmm. the, the white flowers really they just pop, pop in, mm -hmm. they, in their mm -hmm. visual. So, you know, uh, in all your flowers in your garden, don't overlook whites. Yeah, they really they make... Just, they're a great complement to all the other colors. Mm -hmm. they, they blend with everything. Yeah, they yeah. do. Late bloomers, we have quail, cheerfulness, yellow cheerfulness, and flower record. I don't know, that's a large cupped uh, mm -hmm. daffodil, the flower record. So there's just so much variety of, out there, and um, now is the time to, to decide. Yep. And I would also suggest you mark them. When you plant them, right. put a marker there so you know in the spring or late in the summer when the foliage is gone, what's planted there, and you don't try to put a bush on top of all your daffodil bulbs. So make sure you know where they are, because once the foliage disappears, it's they're gone, and you don't know. Can I mention a little trick that I do? What do you do? If you're a wine drinker or you know somebody who is, the wine corks, if you'll take a wine cork, if you'll take a wine cork and cut off about a six inch piece of coat hanger wire and stick that wire in that cork and then just drive that in the ground, then in your garden you'll just have you'll have that you'll have that wine cork you know yeah. sticking up. It's not too obtrusive mm -hmm. in a way. It's a natural color, mm -hmm. you know. But you'll see it when you're on your hands and knees, yeah. and you know that right below it is a bulb. Yeah. yeah. So that's a nice, soft, easy way of marking mark where your bulbs are. Yeah. Because I've had my husband walk up to me in the middle of summer with a handful of things. He says, look what I found. <laughs> you know, and I said, where'd you find those? He's all over there. So, you know, you, they're right. easy to dig up if they're not too deep. And uh, so be sure you mark them because they disappear and you, you can't remember where yeah, you planted you them remember, anyway. Right? So, but anyway. And I also found out uh, that years in the 16th or 17th century in the Netherlands, they had a terrible famine and they were eating bulbs to survive. Yeah. And they survived by eating tulip bulbs. Yeah. So there's understand. nutrition in them, but I wouldn't suggest eating them. But, no. you know, unless we have a terrible famine, so then you can survive with them. But bulbs are just a wonderful addition to your garden. Right. So, and there's other things to do in your garden in October. We don't have a whole lot to do, but um, the annuals and herbs uh, they're fading. But you can start putting out your winter um, annuals, uh, your pansies and snapdragons. Right. And if you want to take your um, herbs, save your herbs yep. um, that are, you can dry them for winter. And then tropicals and houseplants, you got to bring your houseplants in. It's, this is a, a month where you don't know when that first freeze is going to hit. Yep. And we could get some cold weather in the first week of October. 
So I would bring in those tropicals uh, before it gets down to the 40s. Yep, in the, ne yeah. in the next week or two, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Get first, them in. first couple of weeks of October. If you bring them in too soon, what's the difference? You know, just save them, you yep. know. And then before you bring them in, be sure to spray them with insecticidal soap to keep the critters out of your house. So, And I spray mine at the top and the bottom. I spray the soil and make sure there's no critters in the pot. So, But now's the time to do that. Yep. Okay, perennials mums should be blooming. They're all blooming everywhere. And we won't be having a mums sale. The garden club's not having a mums sale this year. Uh, with the COVID thing, it was just not right. a practical and the thing to sale do. That we just had to. Yeah, that had the daylilies instead of mums. So, but um, mums are a great addition to your garden too. Oh yeah. So now is the time to see where you want to plant them. So, and then um, the other other bulbs or rhizomes, you can separate your iris. Iris, yep. it's a good time good to separate time of the year your iris. To yeah. Divide your iris. <laughs> mm -hmm. And do you have very many iris? Yeah, I do. do you? I have a lot. I, matter of fact, I just had to put in a new bed just for iris, iris just because for iris? where I had iris before was getting they so do? heavy. So I'm going to have dozens of iris tubers. They that, do spread. Yeah. They do so spread. So I'm going to expand that. Now. And see, that's a whole other world yep. of plants. You have yep. different iris. You have bearded, and you have Louisiana, you know, and you right. have Japanese and. Uh, yeah. There's just a lot of different yeah, I have the iris. Japanese roof iris, too. Yeah, the roof iris, I have yeah. that. That's we'll so have beautiful. some of those at the spring sale for sale because I've got oh, to yeah. divide mine. And, Me, too. And that, so I'll have that, that yeah. roof iris, Japanese roof it's iris. It's nice system. to share. Yeah, that's a nice, nice plant to share. to share. Now, roses, um, you should stop deadheading your roses and let any of the rose hips bloom. Now, sometimes they set rose hips. Some do and some don't um, set the rose hips. So, right. But... Uh, you don't want to feed it Make now. Make sure there's no dead wood on your roses. Right. Don't cut them back yet. Nope. Wait till the middle of February to cut your roses and mm -hmm. prune them. For your now, if you have a thing. really tall hybrid tea and you're afraid it's going to rock in the wind, you can cut that back down to maybe three feet, yeah. three foot or, you know, three and a half foot. So, but you don't want it to, the wind to be rocking it in yep. the soil. Or, but, or tie it. Yeah, or you can tie it to a stake, mm -hmm. you know, so. Now, your lawns. What do we do with our lawns in October? Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, you can get a pre, you can put out a pre-emergent in October for your what do you use for, for your spring weeds. What do you use for pre-emergent? Uh, I I use uh, corn gluten meal. Corn gluten you know, meal. But there are uh, other ones. That's because I'm a natural guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And uh, but there are other uh, pre-emergents on the market that are mm -hmm. synthetic and you know, chemical based. Yeah, but, we like to stay yeah. away from those. Huh? Yeah. We do. Another thing you can do uh, for your lawn um, in the in the winter is uh, put down a nice layer of compost. Mm -hmm. Can't afford, Kamo don't want to do that work. You can throw humate out there uh, or you can, uh, I don't know where wastewater is right now, but if they have the screen material mm -hmm. and you can get a nice uh, load from them uh, and you get a quarter to a half an inch of that wastewater material on your lawn yeah. in uh, late, late October, <laughs> anytime in November. Mm -hmm. uh, when March comes, look at your lawn and look at mm -hmm. all your neighbors up and down yeah. the block. You're not going to yep. believe your big eyes. Big difference, yeah. That sludge <laughs> makes a Your big lawn's going to look yeah. like it's on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then October's so a great another thing. Yeah. And, and I like keeping my, my grass mode but still deep mm -hmm. you know to keep the ground warm uh, to keep uh, weed seeds from right. reaching the soil mm -hmm. uh, a number a number of things uh, through the through the winter months okay uh, so that's another thing you can do for your lawn yeah. and then trees and shrubs we can plant trees and yeah shrubs now. Uh, people uh, you know buy a lot of trees and shrubs in the in the spring or in the early summer and then the next thing you know, it's 90 something degrees mm -hmm. and no rain and the yeah. poor plant is struggling. Yeah. This what is a people good time. need to realize is that, that trees and shrubs that are planted in the fall, the mm -hmm. roots are expanding and growing right. all winter long, all right. through the winter months. Right. You can't see it, but the root system mm -hmm. is expanding. So that root system can better withstand a hot, dry summer its first year right. than its cousin that was planted six mm -hmm. months later. Yeah. 
So, well, so. the October meeting of the Bella Vista Garden Club will be Wednesday, October 28th at 9.30. We're meeting outside at the pavilion at Kingswood, um, yeah, by Kingswood, Reardon. And uh, we're not serving food or we're not serving anything to drink, so we're doing social distancing with masks. And the program will be Lavender 101, presented by Rich and Kathy Hemming. And they're um, owners of Simplicity Lavender Farm. Yep. And they'll have products to sell there, too. So you might want to stop by. Guests are always welcome. And then, you know, if you need more information or want more information, just go to the Garden Club website, bellavistagardenclub.com. It's a new website on a new platform. It's new and it's improved and still a lot of information. So thank you, Tony, for right. joining me today. Well, I enjoyed it as and usual. And we always learn so much when you're on the show. And if you uh, have enjoyed the program, I hope you'll tune in next month. And until then, don't forget to stop and smell the roses. And feed the birds. The Bella Vista Gardening Program can be viewed on YouTube.com. The National Garden Clubs Incorporated has this as an award-winning TV show.